Welcome back to a guide in surviving stroke and brain injury. Now this one is number eight in our series. Uh, I found a lot of information about this stroke, unfortunately, and it's a thalamic stroke. So when a stroke affects the thalamus, it is because the artery in this area, deep with, excuse me, deep within the brain, has been affected. Thalamic strokes fall under the category of subcortical strokes or lacunar strokes, which affect the deeper range, deeper brain regions beneath the cerebral cortex, as opposed to the outer cortex, cortical regions. Sorry. <laughs> when a stroke occurs, it is a medical emergency as brain cells begin to die within minutes of losing the brain the blood supply. Blood flow needs to be restored as soon as possible to save a person's life. Survivors of a stroke that receive swift, massive, fast treatment usually experience fewer secondary effects and functional impairments that lose that I'm sorry, that those who receive delayed treatment. After a stroke has been medically treated, Rehabilitation should begin as soon as possible to address any resulting secondary effects. They do this because your memory, your, uh, how do you say it, your body memory, it's like riding a bike. You never forget how to after a few times. But the longer it takes, the harder it is for your body to remember how to do it. So what are the secondary effects of a thalamic stroke? Each area of the brain controls different functions. Depending on where a stroke occurs, it can impair a variety of different bodily and functions. The thalamus plays a role in our memory, emotions, sleep-wake cycle, executive functions, processing sensory input, and sensory motor control. When a stroke affects the thalamus, it can impair some of these functions, especially the processing and transmission of sensory information. So the thalamus is responsible for relaying 98% of all sensory input within the body. That's a lot. Therefore, issues with sensation after a thalamic stroke are common. Potential second, secondary effects include numbness or tingling sensations, sleep disturbances, they, um, patients may suffer insomnia after a stroke, in the thalamus obviously, amnesia, <laughs> a thalamic thal thal stroke, thalamic stroke may result in memory loss, vascular thalamic amnesia, that's what it's called. It can affect long or short term memory. It can also be accompanied by a shift in personality. Changes in attention, along with memory, is a high level cognitive skill that the thalamus plays a role in. Thus, the stroke in the thalamus can affect an individual's ability to pay attention. Speech difficulties. Language and communication difficulties, such as aphasia, may occur after a stroke. Hemispatial neglect. This causes the individual to be unaware of the environment on the expected side of their body, opposite the side of the brain that was damaged. It usually occurs when the right hemisphere of the brain is affected, in this case, the right portion of the thalamus, which causes neglect in the opposite side of the body, which is your left side. Vision impairments. There are many types of vision impairments that can occur after a thalamic stroke, so, thalamic stroke, such as diplopia, double vision, which I have, or hemianopia, where half of the visual field is missing. Difficulties with balance. The brainstem, which is near the thalamus, helps regulate vertical eye position and head posture. When these functions are affected by a stroke, it can result in poor balance, which can also result in a poor gait. Central post-stroke pain. This involves chronic neuropathic pain, also known as thalamic pain, when following a thalamic stroke. 
Thalamic pain is a chronic condition that we can have delayed onset. Sometimes it can take months or even years after a thalamic stroke for the pain to develop. It is a rev- relatively common complication affecting up to 8% of individuals following this stroke. It may start off as impaired sensation and later progress into thermal dysregulation such as freezing or scalding sensations. Over time, it can continue to progress to severe chronic pain. This makes it essential to communicate with your medical team if you are concerned about changes in your health and well-being after a stroke. Recovery from a thalamic stroke revolves around restoring and compensating for the abilities that were compromised by the stroke. Not all secondary effects can be partially or fully resolved, but the intensity and timeliness of rehabilitation has a meaningful impact on how much of function a person can recover. Pursuing intensive rehabilitation early on and making an effort to integrate skills learned during rehabilitation into your daily life optimizes recovery outcomes. I can't say this enough. So when the therapy ends, you must, not have to, must continue to grow, continue to practice, continue to rewire your brain so those functions can come back. So here are some of the steps you can take. Physical therapy. When a thalamic stroke leads to motor impairments, physical therapy can help restore movement in body. It may help improve posture, gait training, and strengthening as well. If needed, physical therapists are also able to recommend and train individuals how to use the appropriate type of walker or cane to move around safely. Occupational therapy. It also helps survivors regain mobility, particularly related to activities of daily living, such as eating and dressing. OT can also educate individuals on adaptive equipment and compensation techniques to help minimize difficulties in daily tasks, such as using a grab bar or a shower chair for those with poor balance, which I have both. The benefits of therapy occur through repetitive experience and practice. Let me say that again. The benefits of therapy occur through repetitive experience and practice. The brain attempts to become efficient by creating and strengthening neural pathways for tasks that are frequently experienced. A phenomenon is known as neuroplasticity. So home therapy, very important. It is likely that insurance will cover some PT and OT after stroke. They may even pay for a therapist to come to your home for a short time. However, once insurance stops covering visits with your therapist, it's critical to keep exercising at home to maintain and further your progress towards recovery. Number four, sensory reduction. After a thalamic stroke, it's common for survivors to experience sensory issues such as numbness, tingling, pins and needles sensations, or even pain. Sometimes the brain can adapt and regain the ability to process sensory information through a therapy called sensory retraining. Uh, I think I did that in my OT uh, video a while back that I had a whole bunch of objects in a sack and I would reach in and try to tell you what I was feeling and figure it out before I pulled it out and saw what it was. One example. Often introduced by an occupational therapist, sensory training, retraining, I'm sorry, involves practicing various exercises that involve sensation to encourage the brain to adapt and improve its ability to interpret sensation. For example, you can alternate placing hot and cold towels on your arm to stimulate the brain's sensory processing. Be sure to have a caregiver check the towel isn't too hot before placing it on your affected arm, on the affected arm. 
The key is to do these exercises re regularly to give the brain enough consistent stimulation to spark neuroplasticity. Number five, vision therapy. When vision impairments occur after thalamic stroke, stroke survivors can participate in vision rehabilitation therapy. Vision therapy often involves various eye exercises to retrain the brain how to control the eye muscles. Not all patients respond to this therapy, but some are able to achieve partial or full vision recovery. Vision therapy may also involve learning different techniques to compensate for visual field deficits or inattention. Inattention, such as lighthouse strategy, which I'm currently practicing right now. It focuses on visually scanning side to side like a lighthouse light to see an entire area. So what I do, I take off my glasses because <laughs> I'm trying to retrain my eye muscles. Um, my, my prism glasses help me to see forward and together, but this doesn't strengthen my eyes. So I take a pin. Okay, and I hold it arm's length, and then I usually have a metronome because the metronome lets me know how fast to go, and it helps to hear when to switch. So I put the pin in front of me arm's length, and I move my head, not my eyes. So that is basically what the lighthouse light theory is. And I suggest you do it because it has helped me. So the next on our <clears throat> list is speech and cognitive therapy. So some potential secondary effects of a thalamic stroke include speech difficulties and changes in executive function such as working memory loss or changes in attention span. A speech language pathologist is best expert to seek help from. An SLP knows how to identify and treat speech and cognitive issues in people with neurological injuries like stroke. It often works best to start therapy with an SLP and continue therapy primarily at home with the guidance of your therapist. Two SLPs actually create an app for your phone uh, that individuals can use at home called the CT Speech and Cognitive Therapy app. Your SLP can assign exercises for you to practice at home or the app can provide an assessment and recommend exercises based on your ability level. Number seven is pain management. If you struggle with central post-stroke pain, then seeking treatment is critical. Some stroke survivors may find relief through medication or alternative medicine. When non-surgical pain treatment options fail to provide relief, talk to your doctor about surgical options such as a permanent spinal cord stimulator implant. It's crucial to both seek social support and medical treatment for your overall wellness and to minimize depression and other potential psychological effects with living with chronic pain. Recovery time after stroke varies from person to person. This is because every stroke is different and every recovery is different. While it's impossible to predict recovery time for any single person, it's worth mentioning again that the intensity of rehab has a significant impact on recovery. Only you can do it. When a stroke survivor stick with a consistent rehab program after discharge from inpatient therapy, they see better results than individuals that stop pursuing rehab. This is why a motivating home therapy is often essential for recovery. Whether it has been months or years since experiencing a stroke, rehabilitation is worth pursuing 
When you put in the work, the brain will respond. Recovery from a thalamic stroke will involve hard work and dedication from you. Nobody else. Unfortunately, you can do it. Nobody else can do it for you. During the early stages of stroke recovery, your medical team will assess your condition and any secondary effects that were sustained, such as changes in senses or balance. Then you will work with the team and therapists to address these issues. Your results will partially depend upon the consistency of your rehab program. Find something that motivates you and try your best to stick with it. So that was number eight. Number nine is next. Remember, celebrate every victory, whether big or small. Keep the faith and hope because you can recover. See you next time.